Hey everybody, Chad from Patriot Astro, and as you can see, I'm probably not going to get to do any imaging tonight. The clouds rolled in and it doesn't look like they're going to give up. I'm also battling some frogs over this way, so if you hear those, I apologize for that as well. Um, I recently did a video on how to build your own remotely accessible imaging PC, something you can stick with your mount and remote control from inside the warmth of your home. Um, I did that with this tiny little stick PC, which actually works extremely well. The challenge is this works fantastic when you can get Wi-Fi to it. Um, so that means when you're at your house, you can use your home Wi-Fi network, that's great. But what about when you're at that dark site, right? When you're away from the house, how do we get internet access so that I can pull down images for framing within Nina so I can pull down driver updates or software updates if I happen to need them. I don't want to be stranded at my favorite dark site and not be able to get the software I need or internet access I may need. Well, I teased in the end of that last video about an option I was going to be talking about and that's this video. And we're going to talk about how to get Wi-Fi access when you're in the field. And I'm gonna use this tiny little ugly wireless access point called the Mango. You can pick this up on Amazon for about 30 US dollars. And what it's gonna allow you to do is create a local Wi-Fi network and get internet via your cell phone. So this will simply tether using a USB cable to your Android or iPhone and allow you to get internet access from that location. So again, what do I do? I take this small piece and this small piece, put them together, and I'm drawing only a few amps off my battery, but I've got my full imaging PC and internet access with me, and it is a Wi-Fi hotspot. So it allows me then to also connect my other devices very easily as well. If I have a few people with me, we can all share that internet access. Now this is very powerful um, even for its form factor. So uh, it does have the ability to terminate VPNs and to do a lot of other interesting things. There is a more powerful model that I don't think you're gonna need, uh, but you do have several options. I wanna stick with this one for this build video specifically because of the cost, form factor, and the low power draw. This powers off a USB power supply. Um, just get a USB cable, plug it into a USB port, um, or go directly uh, off, off 12 volt if you need to uh, through a five volt buck converter. And this is five volt, one amp, right? So very, very low power draw. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you how to build it and use it. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I wanna do from my imaging PC is connect to my Patriot Astro Wi-Fi network. Uh, that is a guest network I have at my house that I use for my telescopes. And I'm gonna mirror that on the uh, portable Wi-Fi as well. So I wanna connect to that and get an IP address. And I've recommended in other videos that you can either use static IP addresses for these portable computers or DHCP reservations. And I always recommend that I use a DHCP reservation. And what that's gonna allow me to do is get the same IP address in uh, both access points so that I always have um, the same IP and I can connect to it with remote desktop, whether I'm home or away. So what I'm doing here is I did an IP config all from a command line so that I can obtain a couple things. The first thing is the Mac address, that's the hardware address. I'm going to need that for my reservation. You'll see that in a minute. I want to set up the same SSID for both when I'm at home or away so that it's easier for my PC to connect um, and uh, my imaging PC, my laptop, whatever I have with me. So that's going to be Patriot Astro. I want the network um, address as well, whatever was just assigned to me. I know that's valid. So I'm going to grab that here from IPv4 address. I also need a couple other things like the subnet mask, uh, which in many cases for you should be 255.255.255.0. And then the gateway, right? That's the IP address of my AP or router. Uh, so that's 192.168.1.1. So I'm grabbing that from this machine. So I make sure that we connect one way here at home and it's gonna be the same way when we connect in the field. Now I'm connecting to my home Wi-Fi or router. Now you may have a Comcast box or charter or some other network um, uh, platform you'll connect to. I have Orbi home um, mesh Wi-Fi deployed. Um, I, I definitely would recommend it to anyone. It's great. You can add additional devices and just kind of roam around the house without having any issues. I've got Wi-Fi coverage everywhere. But what I'm doing here is I'm going into my Orbi. I'm going into the LAN setup and you can see I already have some reservations here. This platform lets me add a reservation so that I can take that hardware address that I just grabbed, that MAC address, and I can assign it 
the same IP every time. And again, I'm doing this right now in my home Wi-Fi so that uh, every time I try to connect with remote desktop, I know it's the same IP address, right? It's always the same place. No matter when I boot it, um, it's always going to be something I can connect to very easily. Now, eventually, I'm going to do the same type of thing in that Mango router so that I get the same IP address there as well. So I've added uh, the re reservation. And again, your screens may look different, but what you're looking for, um, if you need to Google it, is how to set a DHCP reservation. Um, but I've set that up here. So now I know that I'm always going to get the dot 59 address. Now this is my external address that just shows you that I'm connected to the internet and I'm connected via my home network. You can see based on the speed that I'm connected via my home network right now. And we'll compare this later to when I'm connected to the Mango router. Now I'm gonna go ahead uh, for the purpose of this video and disable my home guest network, my Patriot Astro network. I wanna make sure that as I move forward in this configuration build, that I'm always connecting to the right box, right? From now on, I wanna to connect to the Mango box. So now I plug in that small AP router, the Mango, and I'm gonna to connect to the built-in Mango SSID, and you can see it's that GL um, connection that's there. I'm gonna to connect to that Wi-Fi network and that's the unsecured or rather unconfigured um, default network that comes with the box. So we see it has no internet, um, but I am connected to it. So now I can connect to it and by default uh, in the documentation, it says to connect to 192.168.8.1. I connect and I go through the basic setup. I'm gonna set an admin password. I'm gonna set, um, um, Okay, now I'm in, and again, it's unconfigured, so I need to do a couple things. The first thing I'm gonna do is set up my wireless. I'm gonna go into wireless, and I'm gonna replace the old SSID with a new one that is gonna mirror my home network. Again, it's gonna be Patriot Astro in this case, and I'm gonna set an SSID key, right? Something I'm gonna need to connect to this network. Once that's set up, I can just simply apply it. Now you notice I got disconnected, but the Patriot Astro network comes up and I can reconnect to that one. So now I'm connected over the Patriot Astro SSID on the Mango device. So now I'm gonna go into more settings and go to LAN IP. And this was 192.168.8.1, but if you remember, I was previously connected on my home network to 192.168.1.1. So I wanna make that look the same as it did when I was at home. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit this to be 1.1 and I'm going to modify the starting and ending IP pool to fit my IP space. By default, it goes from 100 to 249 and the IP I was assigned at home was .59 and it's not in the space. So I'm going to lower that pool to 50. Again, as long as the IP address that you're going to use fits inside that pool, you'll be fine. So I've applied this and it disconnected me, right? Because now my IP address changed, everything's changed about the configuration. Give it a few seconds, it'll come back up and it will prompt you to log in to the new IP address. It will actually automatically redirect your system. So now I'm reconnected to my Mango and I've got the right IP space and I've got the right SSID. Now I need to go into the Mango and set the static IP address binding. This is the DHCP reservation. To do this, I need the MAC address, but the proper format for the MAC address needs colons, not dashes. So I change it to colons and then I paste it and put the IP address I want. Remember, I always want 192.168.1.59 for my purpose. So I've committed that and now I've got a reservation in my Mango and I've got a reservation in my home uh, network as well. And it's the same IP address in both cases. So now I need to look at tethering. How do I get internet access? We're gonna grab our phone and USB cable at this point. Now this works for Android or iPhone. Um, I've tested with the iPhone and it actually works just fine. And I'll show you that on screen here momentarily. So on your iPhone, open it up and go to settings. 
And then you're going to want to go and open your personal hotspot. That's how we enable sharing. And we're going to click allow others to join. You can see one of the options here is to connect via USB, which is what we'll be doing. So we're going to take that USB cable we have, the lightning cable, connect it to our iPhone, and then connect it to the Mango's USB port. And as soon as we do that, notice it looks like it's powering up the iPhone. It's connected to battery because it's connected to a battery source. And we can see the tethering shows up. We can click connect. You're at this point going to be prompted to trust the device. So on your iPhone, click trust and then enter your passcode. Wait a second, when it's done, disconnect the iPhone cable and then reconnect it and tethering should come up on, almost immediately. You can see now that the tethering is here and everything looks like it should be working. So we're on Patriot Astro, we're connected and secured. We can see the Wi-Fi is connected, which means we're connected to the Mango router, if you remember. So let's go check the IP address now. My external IP address at this point through the Mango to the internet shows a 174 dot address. And if I look that up, you'll see that that's actually going to be Verizon Wireless. So I am connected through the Mango over Wi-Fi to the internet via my iPhone. I can also do a speed test. Now, if you noticed, um, on the previous screens, I had a single bar. I have a really poor connection in this location, but trust me, it works. Even at this speed, this current demo right here is working on that low bandwidth connection. So here I am in Nina, and I'm in the Sky Atlas, and I'm gonna go ahead and search for M51. And let's go ahead and pull up framing for that. Now this is real time. I did not speed this part of the video up. So we wait about 10 seconds or so, and you'll see that we'll get one degree of framing for M51 to come up via the iPhone. So if we look at the properties, there's one more thing I wanna show you that you may wanna consider. If you go into your Wi-Fi SSID and then scroll down, you may wanna set this as a metered connection. And the reason you can set this as a, want to set this as a metered connection is because if Windows updates were gonna come down and be downloaded automatically while you're in the field connected to iPhone, it could rack up a lot of data charges. But by default, Windows update will not download updates over metered connections. So if you set that SSID to be metered, you're not gonna to have to worry about updates being pulled over your cellular network and the uh, charges that could come along with that. Now this platform has a lot of other options, it has VPN options, it has all sorts of other options. So this small $30 box um, is gonna give me Wi-Fi in the field, it's gonna give me internet access in the field, and it uh, actually has a lot of other features as well. It can be configured a number of different ways. Personally, again, I'm setting this up for tethering. So I hope this helps, hope you enjoyed it, and good luck.